The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> and now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, here we are in Melrose Springs again, where at the moment most of the housewives are listening to their favorite morning radio program, Honest Harold, the Homemaker. Let's tune in and listen to Honest Harold, who is just telling his listeners about his new project. And so, girls, let's all get behind this drive for the sunny side of 70 Club, a clubhouse where the old folks can enjoy their leisure time. Ladies, if you can't send cash, send us books and old games. Anything around the house you don't need. Of course, don't send us your husband. <laughs> uh, hello, Gloria Oh, good morning, Harold How's the mail for the sunny side of 70 Clubhouse coming in? It's not <laughs> Golly, Mr. Hemp, I'm sorry your campaign to help the old folks isn't going over Yes, yeah, so am I, Gloria Everybody sort of forgets about the old people And how lonesome they must get I just thought they deserve a clubhouse where they could get together, play games, have some fun in life. Remember the old saying, Gloria? The years pass silently, but old age creaks up on you. <laughs> Gee, someday I'll be old. Hmm? I'll have children, then grandchildren, then great-grandchildren. Oh, what'll I do? Well, I'd get married first. <laughs> think I should, Harold? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, when the proper young fellow comes along. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of proper young fellows, how is our dear boss, Stanley Peabody, this morning? Oh, him? Yeah, I know what you mean. Why is it with all the nice radio station managers in the country we had to get that pickle face? Is that you, Hemp? Oh, hello, pickle face. I mean, Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hemp, uh? I just received the results of the intelligence test we gave our employees here at the radio station. Uh? Just thought you'd like to know. You came out at the top of your classification. Well, did you hear that, Gloria? The top, eh? Yes, you're the smartest moron working here. Good <laughs> <laughs> day, Hemp. Ha, ha. Hyena. Smartest moron. Gee, you came in first. I came in sixth. <laughs> Well, I guess I didn't do so bad after all. <laughs> See you later, Gloria. Hmm. A lot of traffic today. Four cars and a bicycle. Guess I'll cross the street here. Watch out where you're going. Out of state license. Careful there, Sinatra. What? Oh, it's old Doc Yak Yak. Would you like a Boy Scout to help you across the street, madame? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very funny, you old horse doctor. Well, I'd rather be doctoring a horse than most people I know. Present company accepted. Oh, I, yes, of course. How is the veterinary business, Doc? Well, just getting back from a house call. Jeff Peters' cow is ailing. Oh? Uh -huh. Sinus trouble. Yes. <laughs> well, is it serious? Couldn't tell. It was kind of hard to examine her. Mm -hmm. Jeff was milking her at the same time. <laughs> What's new with you, crooner? What's your latest crusade? Well, it's not exactly a crusade, Doc, but I am campaigning for that sunny side of 70 Recreation Hall. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. It's all right, my boy. But people are always worrying about people. Mm -hmm. It's about time somebody started worrying about animals. What? Well, animals get old, too, you know. Now, Doc. You never heard of a home for elderly gophers. <laughs> Why, that's silly. Nobody ever started a pension plan for Cocker Spaniels over 60. Oh, Doc. What about a recreation hall for our old four-legged friends? You never saw two cows playing canasta. Yeah. Go vaccinate a mule, will you, Doc? <laughs> Yoo-hoo! 
Mother, I'm home. Oh, hello, Harold. Did you have a nice day? Well, pretty good, Mother. Uh, oh, and I have a wonderful surprise, Harold. We're having a guest for dinner. A guest? Who? Well, he came to the door to sell me something. He was such a nice man. And we got to talking, and he said he hadn't had a home-cooked meal for so long. But you don't know anything about him, Mother. Why, he might turn out to be a crook or something. Oh, he couldn't be dishonest with a name he has. Oh, what is his name? Sincere Sam Smith. Oh. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> now, Harold... Mr. Smith is a very honest man, I can tell. Huh? He has especially large earlobes. D large earlobes? Mm -hmm. Oh, Mother. <laughs> oh, you can always judge people by their earlobes. Mother, it's wonderful to be sweet and trusting, but you're much too gullible. It's a good thing you've got me to protect you from these shady characters. Yeah, probably him now. I'll take care of him. Sincere Sam Smith. But he's a real slicker. Probably wears two-toned shoes. I'd better have a peek at him first. Mm, I'll say he's got large earlobes. Looks like a bloodhound. <laughs> well, that won't fool me. Yes? Good evening, Mr. Hemp. Good evening. It's a pleasure to meet you. Smooth. <laughs> Let me shake your hand. <laughs> better take my elk swing off first. So you're the man I've heard so much about. That? You're Honest Harold, the homemaker. Mr. Hemp, I have a favor to ask of you. You won't get a cent out of me. I wonder if I could have your autograph. Ha. Huh? <laughs> you know, you're quite a celebrity with me, Mr. Hemp. I can honestly say that as a radio performer, you're far better than Arthur Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> Say, it's too bad that you're not on television. Hmm? I didn't realize you were so handsome. Ah. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you you look like George Rav? Well, we both use steak home. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith, won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Yeah, please sit down, Mr. Smith. Mother will be right in. Fine. Well, he looks nice and honest. He does have a fine pair of earlobes. Uh, Mr. Smith, Mother tells me you're a salesman. Oh, I, I do that as a sort of hobby. Mm. I love to meet people, you know. I'm, I'm really an oil man, retired. Oh, I see. But uh, just to keep active, I've been merchandising this very useful household gadget. Household gadget? Well, what is it? Well, it's a special kind of powder. It's very handy if you ever have to make a forced landing in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. It repels sharks. <laughs> <laughs> repels sharks, eh? Well, that sounds like a handy thing to have around the kitchen, all right. <laughs> How are they selling? Well, not too well, Honest Harold. Oh. I bought a whole carload of them, too. War surplus, you see. I guess I'm just an old country boy, but I couldn't stand to see the government, my government, stuck with all that shock repellent. <laughs> well, say, you're a real patriot, sincere Sam. Oh, I try to be. Mm -hmm. But you, you are the real humanitarian. I am? Yes, that's a wonderful idea you have. The sunny side of 70 Clubhouse. It's too bad you're having trouble raising that money. Well... Honest Harold, I like you. I like your face. Oh, it's just a face. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to raise that money for you. You are? Yes, indeed. All you have to do is to sell my shark repellent powder over your radio program. And you can keep 25 cents out of every dollar for your clubhouse. Gosh, how can I ever thank you? I'm glad to do it. There's just one thing, Honest Harold... Uh, if we're going into this partnership, I'll have to ask you to put up a bond of $50. A bond? Well, um, don't you trust me? Of course, yes. Personally, I trust you 100%. But we have to protect the old folks. Say, that's pretty thoughtful of you, sincere Sam. Yeah. Just a minute here. I'll get my wallet. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. 
May I have my wallet back now? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Say, thanks for the money, and, uh, and now I want to give you something. Uh? Here is a free sample of my shark repellent powder. Well, thanks, but I don't really need it. A shark would have to be pretty smart to catch me. <laughs> 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 And before signing off this morning, dear listeners, I want to thank you all for the way you've been sending in your dollars for our shark repellent powder. Remember, 25 cents of every dollar goes toward outfitting the sunny side of 70 Clubhouse. And by the way, people are having a lot of fun finding ways to use this powder. It shines in the dark, you know. Clem Beggs put some on his beard, and now he can read in bed at night without turning on the nightlight. <laughs> his wife likes it, too. But seriously, folks... You're just about the kindest, nicest people I know. I love those dear hearts and gentle people who live in my hometown. Because those dear hearts and gentle people will never, ever let you down. They read the good book from Friday till Monday That's how the weekend goes I've got a dream house I'll build there one day With picket fence and rambling roads I feel so welcome Each time that I return That my happy heart keeps laughing like a clown I love the dear hearts and gentle people who live and love in my hometown. Three hundred and forty. Three hundred and forty-one. All through, counting the money, Honest Harris? Yeah, almost sincere, Sam. Just have to figure up this small change. Three hundred and forty-two. Three hundred and four... Oop. <laughs> Canadian dime. <laughs> it's been floating around town ever since that bagpipe band from Toronto was up here. <laughs> Three hundred and forty-two dollars and ninety cents. That is wonderful. And we still have one more day to go. Say, uh, this is a lot of money, Sincere Sam. Don't you think we ought to put it in the hotel safe here? Oh, no. I think it would be safer here in the hotel room uh, with me. You do? Yes. I don't trust the manager. Uh-huh. Ever notice? No earlobes. No. <laughs> you can't take chances with a man like that. Guess you're right. It's a good thing we got you looking after the money, Sincere Sam. Well, thank you, Honest Harold. Come into my office. Uh, what is it, Stanley, old man? Hemp, I want to talk to you about this shark repellent powder. I'd like to sprinkle some on him. I've just been thinking. Always bragging. Yes, Stanley. If anything should happen to all this money you've taken in, you know this station is liable. Huh? What about this character, Sincere Sam? Are you sure he's honest? One of the most honest men I ever met, Stanley. Relax. This shark powder sounds fishy to me. <laughs> made it funny. <laughs> it looks to me like Sincere Sam has pulled the wool over your eyes. No, I'm just wearing my bangs kind of low today, Stan. <laughs> Hemp, you're such a sheep. Sheep? Are you sure this Sincere Sam hasn't been fleecing you? Hemp, Stanley, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll call good old Sam and have him bring the money over right now. Gloria, get me the Antler Hotel. Stanley, you're going to feel awfully ashamed of yourself. Hello? Antler Hotel? I'd like to speak to Sincere Sam Smith, please. Mm hmm. I'll wait. Calling me a sheep, Stanley. Shame. Hello? What's that? Sincere Sam is gone. He checked out. 
Well, Hemp, what have you got to say? <laughs> we'll return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. The National Guard is now beginning its 1950 recruiting drive. 220,000 men are needed to reach the desired quota. Why not stop in at your local National Guard recruiting office and learn the full details? To keep America prepared, the National Guard needs you now, today. And by the way, don't miss Harold Perry's important announcement at the end of our show. And now back to Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold is learning that large earlobes may hide a dishonest heart. For the great philanthropist, sincere Sam Smith, has left town with the money raised for the sunny side of 70 Club. Right now, Harold is in Stanley Peabody's office on the carpet. But I just can't understand it, Stanley. There must be some mistake. There is, Hemp. And you made it. And it just goes to prove what I've always said. You're an incompetent, idiotic, bungling, uh... Stupid? Yes. Stupid dolt. <laughs> You're so right, Stanley, and I let all those people down. They'll never get the clubhouse now, and all those nice people who sent in their dollars, and that Canadian with his dime. <laughs> well, you've got more than that to worry about. I hate to do this, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn this whole matter over to the police. You mean they'll put sincere Sam in jail? Oh, Mother's going to be very upset about that. Well, she won't have to be. You'll be there with him. <laughs> Stanley, you wouldn't do that I'm sorry, Hemp But it's my duty to protect the reputation of this station Stanley, give me a chance For old time's sake Remember the office party last Christmas In the dark under the mistletoe, Stanley You thought I was Gloria till you felt my mustache <laughs> This is no time for sentiment, Harold <laughs> Now, honest, Harold, I'll give you just 24 hours to get that money back. 24 hours? And if you don't, you'll be going up the river. Up the river? Gosh, she's throwing me to the sharks, and I sold out all that powder. <laughs> I guess it's no use, Harold. We've called almost every town around here. And there's no sign of sincere Sam. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gloria, but I just got to find him. Well, all right. I'll try another town. Good old Gloria. Uh, call the hotel in Honkerville. Uh. Operator, get me Honkerville 1 3, please. Mm -hmm. Hello? Honkerville Plaza? <laughs> just a moment, please. Here's your party, Harold. Yeah, thank you. Hello? Desk clerk? I said desk clerk? Hmm, must be deaf. Did a stranger check into your hotel lately? He did? And he wore a frock coat? Patent leather shoes? Duck bill haircut? When did you see him last? 1905. <laughs> <laughs> William Jennings Bryan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? No, I'm not going to vote for him. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, brother, it's no use, Gloria. We failed. Excuse me, Harold. Uh, Station KHJP. What? What? Oh, thank you. What is it, Gloria? Oh, that was the hotel in Sigmund City. Sincere Sam just checked in there. Oh, Gloria, you're wonderful. And... <laughs> Why, Harold, you kissed me. Does that mean we're engaged? Gloria, for heaven's sake, I'm in enough trouble now. <laughs> fast now. I'll get Pete, the town marshal, and we'll dash over and slip the handcuffs on sincere Sam Smith before he knows it. We'd better hurry, though. He's pretty slippery. He's liable to sneak out of Sigmund City before we get there. Hope the marshal's in. Good. There he is. Marshal, I gotta see you right away. Just a minute, Harold. I'm on the phone. Now, what was that again, Miss Crocker? You, you want a dog license? Uh, Pete, this is urgent. Uh, now, you just have to wait your turn. Ooh. Now, Miss Crocker... <laughs> I'll have to fill out a form. Uh, what's the dog's name? Geraldine. Well, now, that's a cute name. <laughs> yeah, let me write that down. Cute name. And what's the dog's age? Uh-huh. 
Um, married or single? <laughs> I must have the wrong form. <laughs> oh, brother, look here, Pete. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, well, I'll take care of it, Miss Crocker. Goodbye. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, Harold? Well, Pete, How's I... your mother? Did you get over a rheumatism? Yes. Marshal, I want to report a robbery. A robbery? Okay, we'll have to fill out a form. What? <laughs> Where did I put that? Here it is. <laughs> Form kind of dusty. <coughs> Pete! All right, I'm ready. Name, please. Oh, for heaven's sake, you've known me for 20 years. I'm Harold Hep. Let me write that down. H A R O L D Hemp. Sounds like a nickel cigar. <laughs> Pete, will you stop that writing? I want to talk to you. Look at me. You need to shave, boy. <laughs> I want you to help me, Pete. I want you to arrest a man named Sincere Sam Smith. Sincere Sam Smith. Let me write that down. <laughs> Will you hurry it up while we're standing here talking? He's absconding with my $343. $343. Let me write that down. <laughs> oh, Nellie, now I've got to start all over. What's the matter now? I <laughs> forgot to put in some carbon paper. Oh. <laughs> Pete, you're the slowest, most inefficient, most aggravating bungler I ever saw. Besides that, you're an old foof. Let me write that down. <laughs> hey, how do you spell foof? F O. Never mind. I'll do it myself. Goodbye. Yeah, that marshal's a big help. Well, I'll drive over to Sigmund City and catch Sincere Sam myself. My little old Essex will get me there in no time. Oh, here we are. Uh, uh. Oh, <laughs> got to get that seat spring fixed. Come on, Essie. Yeah, there she goes. <laughs> Darn it. Same old trouble. Chicken feathers in the gasoline. <laughs> I won't buy another gallon of gas from Charlie till he gets rid of those leghorns. <laughs> oh, poor Essie's got asthma. <laughs> Now, what am I going to do? Wonder where I can borrow a car. Hey there, lover boy. Having motor car trouble again? Oh, Doc, in that silly horse and buggy. Oh, there, Silver Moon. <laughs> Silver Moon, she looks like she's in an eclipse. <laughs> uh, say, Harold, I just heard you was in a little trouble. That uh, sincere fella skipped out on you, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I warned you about trusting human beings. Now, if you'd have given that money to a chipmunk... Yeah, all right, Doc. I'm in a hurry. Oh, where are you going? Sigmund City. i got to catch Sincere Sam. Oh, a manhunt. Well, you better get there in a hurry. I know that. Well, Harold, I wouldn't do this for everybody, but since speed is of the essence, I'm going to let you take my horse and buggy. Oh, that's real nice of you, Doc. But I want to get there this week. <laughs> Why, Silver Moon's the fastest buggy horse in town. She's the only buggy horse in town. Well, if you want to split horse hairs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's a fine animal, though, front and back. It's not her front and back that worries me, Doc. It's that sag in the middle. <laughs> That's where you ought to put the buggy. Oh, now you're going to hurt her feelings, Harold. Huh? Oh, he didn't mean it, Silver Moon. Oh, my goodness. Doc, I appreciate your offer. Okay, but... Harold, it's your loss. Silver Moon's got a fine background. Ex-polo pony, ex-race horse. Used to be cavalry horse. First World War. Went over the top at Chateau Theory. How does she ever get over the top with that beer belly? Oh, <laughs> well, come on, Silver Moon. I guess we're not wanted here. Doc, wait a minute. I'll take your offer. Silver Moon ought to be able to make it to Sigmund City. It's all downhill. Come on, help me in this buggy. All right, uh, now watch, watch the step. Yeah, yep. uh, uh, there you are. Uh, <laughs> giddy up, Silver Moon. <laughs> so long, Doc. So long, Harold. Watch out for speed cop. Say, it runs like a racehorse at that. Look at that knee action. <laughs> this is better than my Essex, no shifting. 
Come on, Silver Moon. We'll get to Sigmund City before... Uh-oh, Lumberyard's on fire again. Silver Moon, what are you stopping for? Oh, she's turning around. I better hang on. Silver Moon, you're going the wrong way. Hi, Harold. You back already? <laughs> Doc, where's this racehorse going? She's heading for the lumber yard. I forgot to tell you. Used to be a fire horse, too. Oh. Silver Moon! Oh, shut up. Harold, you're through. You stalled around all day, and now since Sir Sam has checked out of that hotel in Sigmund City, the sunny side of 70 Club ruined by a shady character. I'm sorry I let all you old folks down. Please forgive me, old friends. I was trying to do the right thing. Guess you'll never have that clubhouse now. And it's all my fault. Honest Harold Hemp. I despise you. You deserve to go to jail. This is going to be a great blow to my mother. Her only son in the penitentiary. <laughs> Hello, Mother. I'm home. Oh, I've been wondering where you were, Harold. And there's someone here waiting for you. Who is it, J. Edgar Hoover? Did I hear somebody come in? Why, hello, honest Harold. Sincere Sam. Where you been, boy? Where have I been? Now, look here, Sincere Sam. I took a little trip, honest Harold, over to Sigmund City. And I took our money along, and I bought out the sporting goods section of the hardware store. And you should have seen the things he brought back, Harold. All kinds of games. Horseshoes, shuffleboard. What? Yes, yes. For the Sunnysiders Clubhouse. I kind of lost my head, I guess. You know, I even spent $50 of my own money there. Uh, you can't do too much for the old folks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Honest, Harold, I, I hope you weren't worried today about the money. Worried? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I took the day off and watched the lumberyard burn down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold, who will return to you in just a moment with that very important message. The supporting players tonight included Ken Peters, Catherine Card, Polly Bayer, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria, Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak, and Art Baker as Sincere Sam. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Now back to Honest Harold. You know, Bob, I'm hunting for a laughing lady. Someone we can invite to appear on our show. And what's more, fun than laughing, Bob. And for the lady with a lucky laugh, there's going to be plenty of fun. Because when we find her, we're going to put her on a TWA constellation and fly her to Hollywood, where she'll be my guest at the beautiful Country Club Hotel for a whole week here in Hollywood. And if we can lure her away from the swimming pool, she's to appear with us on the Harold Perry Show. And all a gal has to do for that vacation is just laugh. Right. <laughs> And her laugh will enter in the Honest Harold Laugh Contest, and it begins right in her hometown. That's your invitation, girls. If that big laugh contest is being conducted in your city, enter, and you may be here with us some Wednesday night. Come on, girls. Let's all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> This is Bob Lamont speaking, and this is CBS, where you thrill to suspense every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>